TikTok. I'm sorry that there's been such a delay in my videos. Life has been getting a little bit busier. It's been a little bit harder finding the time to film and edit. So my new goal is gonna be to post a video every other week or every two weeks. Also, I just want to address the elephant in the room and that is that I do not live in my car. I think the only other video that I've ever filmed in my house was the very first video. Yeah, I live in a house. <laughs> this is a really awkward angle in my bedroom, but it's because this is the only angle where I can get some lighting on my face. So yeah, but anyway, it's good to be back and let's get right into today's topic. So in this video, specifically I'm talking about the time period after you've received your diagnosis and before you've had a chance to meet with your oncologist. And these are just my five cents. Everyone copes differently. Everyone has different stress levels, but after taking some time to reflect on what I did right after I received my cancer diagnosis, these are some things that I would recommend. So the first thing is something not to do, and that is to Google <laughs> or research. So it might be hard for some people, and this might be controversial to say too, because in general, I'm a big fan of researching, knowledge is power, but in this particular situation, I think it really helped me to not do research on my own. I just waited until I spoke with my oncologist, and I think that that really helped me in terms of my stress level, not to say that I wasn't stressed because I really was, but if you're in that window of time where you've received biopsy results and you have not met with your oncologist yet, there's still so much more information that you need to be aware of and cancer is so specific to each person. So I just kind of kept in mind, I was gonna talk to my oncologist, gather all of my information from the expert and hear it from the horse's mouth, so to speak. And until I had that appointment with my oncologist, I just decided that I wasn't going to research anything at all. I think if I did research, it would probably only perpetuate my own stress. And sometimes what happens when you research too is you can kind of go down this rabbit hole of reading about awful, tragic stories. And I just think it was really good for my mental health to not get into any of that and just not research at all. On the other hand, my husband did do a lot of research and I am pretty positive that it only worsened his stress and anxiety because he was looking at worst case scenarios. So it just was not helpful. And an alternative to doing your own research would be writing down a list of questions that you're gonna wanna ask your oncologist when you do have that appointment with him or her. That can be helpful twofold because you're brainstorming about all of the questions that you wanna have answered and you're doing something proactive to help yourself. The next thing is something that I really wish someone would have told me, which is to stop judging yourself for not being able to be as productive, lack of memory, not being able to concentrate, and basically not being able to keep up with the normal pace of your life. And I talked about this in one of my very first videos that it felt like making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for my daughters was like asking me to perform brain surgery. It was so hard to concentrate and I was just so scattered. I was trying to do a million things at once and I couldn't focus. And it was really hard to do daily tasks that I was totally used to doing. So I wish that someone would have told me, stop, you were just diagnosed with cancer. Of course you're gonna be scatterbrained. Of course you're gonna forget things. Of course it's gonna be difficult to keep up with your everyday life. You know, your life was just turned upside down in a second. So one thing you can do to help yourself is to stop judging yourself. My next tip is to think back to previous things you've done to cope with stressful situations and do whatever tends to help you, whether it's journaling, exercising, praying, meditating, talking to friends or family, consuming yourself in a show. And yes, it's okay to kind of escape things by getting really into a show and binge watching something that's okay, you're allowed to do that. You don't have to be thinking about cancer every single second of the day. And if you do, that's gonna drive you crazy. <laughs> So try to think of things that you've done in the past that have helped and implement them now to see if they still might be helpful now. 
And I also really wanna emphasize that you should do what feels right to you. And that's not gonna look the same for every single person and that's okay. And for some people that might be keeping things the same. For me, that's what helped me. I still went to work one day a week. I still took care of my girls and had basically the same schedule that we had before. I wanted everything to be as normal as possible because familiarity feels really good to me. But for someone else, that might be to actually stop and to not go to work and to cancel all of your appointments and regular activities. So again, for everyone it's different and I think it's just really important to do what you think is right for you. So this point may seem contradictory to the previous point, but I would also recommend listening to the people who you love and who you trust and taking their input into serious consideration. And that doesn't always mean that you will do exactly what they say or that you'll agree with them, but just to take it into consideration. They may be seeing things a little bit more clearly than you are. So just kind of like a disclaimer, I guess, is to try to stay open-minded to what they're telling you. My next tip is is if you happen to know someone who's received the same diagnosis previously to reach out to them because people who have had a cancer diagnosis more often than not have such a large amount of empathy so if you happen to know someone who received the same diagnosis definitely reach out that's actually what I did on the day that I received my diagnosis I texted a co-worker of mine and I let her know over text hey I just got diagnosed with breast cancer and I actually asked her if I could call her when she was done with her work day and she texted me back and she gave me her work phone number and she insisted that I call right then and there and it was right in the middle of her work day but it didn't matter to her and so I just called her and she was so kind and I think we spoke for a good like 45 minutes or so anyway she was amazing and it's not I'm sure it's not always the case 100% of the time, but I do feel that most people want to help other people. So I would highly recommend that you reach out to someone if you happen to know someone else with the same diagnosis. This next tip is probably gonna be hard for a lot of people and it was hard for me too, and that is to accept help. And so I'm definitely someone who is not crazy about asking for help from other people and receiving is difficult for me too. But in this kind of situation, I was so overwhelmed that I couldn't even push back at all. So one of my best friends, the day that I received my diagnosis, made my family and I dinner. And that was amazing because I was not in a place to cook and certainly neither was my husband. So that was extremely helpful and then another good friend of mine a neighbor she set up a whole meal train to extend through most of my chemo treatment and that was really amazing too because keeping up with chemo and side effects and two kids was just a lot so it really alleviated so much stress so I would highly recommend letting down those guards and accepting help What you doing? Oh. I wanted to see you. You wanted to see me? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm doing a video. I'm hungry. Oh, okay. Should I get you a snack? Mm -hmm. And the last recommendation that I have is to check out some breast cancer apps on your phone or Facebook groups, but I do think that's important to be really careful to stick to newly diagnosed areas of those apps and those groups, just because again, it can be really tempting and hard to kind of go down those rabbit holes of people who are unfortunately in the worst case scenarios. And you can talk to other people who are just starting out with this journey too. And so that's what I did. And I forget the name of the app that I ended up using, but I will put it down here somewhere. But I signed up for it. I kind of looked around the app a little Bit and read some other women's stories and I did find that to be helpful and I realized the night before Thanksgiving that someone had sent me a message and it was another young woman and she also had young kids we ended up kind of texting back and forth through this app and she really made my night and she made the next day Thanksgiving day so much better so much more positive because 
it was just so nice to connect with someone who was also pretty newly diagnosed and to see that she was in relatively good spirits and from that one conversation she gave me so much hope and she kind of alleviated some stress for me and made light of certain things. I wasn't really comfortable sending pictures of myself but she had texted me some pictures of her and she showed me you know some pictures of her kids. Anyway it was just really nice. So yeah I just remember the next day I felt like I had a little pep in my step because I had connected with someone who was pretty much in the same boat as me and it felt so good. So anyway those are my tips on how to cope right after receiving your cancer diagnosis. I hope that that helped and the next video that I do I'm planning on talking about what to do right after receiving your cancer diagnosis. So I'll talk to you later. Bye.